nobody knew that I was D.D. Sharp. Nobody knew. Um, and when I made my first appearance on American Bandstand, all of the kids at school were like, whoa, Miss Thing. Oh, you just doing this. I'm like, no, mm-mm, that's, I denied it, okay? I didn't want anybody to know. Something could happen on this show, you never can tell. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Pam from the Rock and Roll Show, and I'm here with Joe Farina. Hi, Joe. How are you tonight? Good, Pam. How are you? I'm glad I can make it. I wasn't too sure if I was able. You know, I'm glad, I too. To make it, so <laughs> now here I am. All right. So uh, <laughs> who's our special guest tonight, Joe? Well, before I introduce our incredible guest, oh, man, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> before I do that, uh, just want to say, be sure to uh, check out the Dick Biondi Film website, dickbiondifilm.com. We have an incredible YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the Dick Biondi Film YouTube channel. Also, like the Dick Biondi Film Facebook page and be sure to join the Dick Biondi Film Facebook group. We're everywhere. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, Pamela and I are truly honored and thrilled to introduce to you one of the most iconic singers um, from the rock and roll era and also one of the most iconic soul voices as well. And we're just absolutely honored and thrilled to have on the show Dee Dee Sharp. Dee Dee, how are you, sweetie? Thank, thank you, thank you for joining I us. I am wonderful. Uh, Hi, thank, Dee Dee. God. thank God I'm good. I thank <laughs> God I am really good. How are you doing, guys? We're doing great. We're doing good. better now that you're good. here. <laughs> well, so much. I wanted to introduce a friend of mine that I brought along with me. Um, he is everything to me, okay? He is aside from my husband. He's everything to me. He's not only he's not only he's not only one of my producers, he's also my webmaster. He's also my confidant. He's he's everything. I mean, Danny and I have worked together so much. Um Bill thinks that we're married, okay? Um, <laughs> but but Danny's got a wife and, and I've got a husband. But you know, this is my all in all, Danny McEwen. Hi, Dan. How you doing tonight? Good to oh, have good. you with us. Yes, well, Dan. Glad Welcome. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. <laughs> and thanks I for getting DD on. She contacted me. She says, you got to get on on this. I said, well, <laughs> I'll great. call in, but I didn't know whether I was going to be interviewed or not. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, hey, we're glad to have you. We are. Well, how, did you two, how, how did you two come together in the first place? Oh, yeah. well, well, I was a studio musician for years, and I, I think uh, back in the day, I had uh, met Dee Dee, and, you know, of course, uh, I, I'm from Philadelphia, so all the musicians used to talk about Dee, and especially the artists. As a matter of fact, Frankie Smith did Double Dutch Bus. Uh, I had worked on the Double Dutch Bus album with Frankie, and Frankie used to tell me a story when he was a writer for Philly International. He said he worked for Kenny Gamble, who was Dee Dee's husband at the time. He said, and Kenny told me to go over to see Miss Sharp. He says, Dan, I was so scared. He says, my knees were shaking. He said, but I went over there and she taught me how to structure music, how it was done and how it was done properly. And this is the way they used to look up to Dee Dee. I mean, she was, and Dee Dee taught me a lot too, you know, as a producer, songwriter. So together we helped each other out. And uh, we've been doing projects, uh, I guess, since the 70s, you know, yeah. uh, all the yeah. way up till now. So uh, yeah, that's how beautiful. long we've been together. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. It, it, you know, you meet people in this life and you don't know why, you don't know how it's going to uh, uh, come together, but it happened with us. And it, we have never, ever 
N no arguments, no nothing. I mean, we agree on just about everything and we talk about everything in depth and we structure everything. So that's why I say Danny is my everything. You know, he's, he's, he's the manager that I always wanted that I never had. What a lucky girl you are. Yes, very. I'm extremely uh, good, lucky. Good. I'm extremely <laughs> lucky. I'm extremely lucky because he's, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. Danny, uh, tell, 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 uh, tell them about um, when we did the show for PBS. So in 1985, uh, Dee Dee was called to do a show for PBS called Night Music. So they needed somebody to produce the uh, the music portion of it. So I had to put together the band and the orchestra. So there was Harold Miller, the Blue Notes, Dee Dee Sharp, uh, the Silhouettes. Remember that song, Get a Job? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. The Silhouettes, oh, the yeah. original Silhouettes, and another group, the Majors. And uh, it was one of the first oldies concerts on PBS, national show. Mm -hmm. And when we did it, we did it at the Forum in Philadelphia. And when I went out there on stage with her, it was packed. There was over a thousand people and they had the mayor there, Jesse Jackson. I mean, you name it, anybody that was somebody was there. And it was because of Dee Dee. But PBS ran that show for years. You know, I yeah. used to see it on all the time uh, yeah. back in the 80s uh, yeah. to raise money. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we had made history back then. That's yeah. great. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, and I mean, not only, not only that, we've done a lot of songs together, Dan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, you know, I've done so many songs, I can't even remember how many songs I've done. Yeah, we just did a uh, project for Tony Bon Jovi uh, yeah. earlier this year for an upcoming Hallmark movie. Yeah. And uh, they flew us down to uh, Florida to go work with Charlie Colillo. Charlie did all the arrangements for the Four Seasons. Uh, he did uh, Sweet Caroline with Neil Diamond. He did Born to Run with Bruce Springsteen. So we got a chance to work with Charlie. Yeah, okay, yeah, so, uh, you know, these are the kind of uh, projects we've done together. We've had a lot of fun. You know, Dee Dee, back in the day, was the original black teen idol. You know, she yeah. opened the door for Beyonce and, and all these artists that are out there. She was the first. And I remember growing up, I remember you know, watching TV and seeing her and seeing her in the magazine, the teen magazines, you know, so she was huge and she really opened the door for a lot of gals out there today. Well, she was, and I, I used to watch her on American Bandstand and yep. I was doing the mashed potatoes. I'm an old baby boomer. <laughs> so I, I'm really honored to meet you after all these years. Who would think I would be talking to you? Dee Dee Sharp. I mean, it's so cool. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just me. I'm I'm just me. I'm a child of God, and I'm just me. I I that's that's the way I feel. I'm just well, me. It's a pleasure, really, to meet you. <laughs> so you. let's go back to your early uh, church days, back when you were singing gospel as a little girl. Can you talk about that and how it felt? You know, when you first started singing, how old were you? Three years old. Oh my goodness. Three, my, my, my aunt, the other day, my aunt reminded me that I was three years old when I sang my first gospel song and it was called Christ is All. And my aunt who played piano played for me and I sang at three. And we did concerts all over the Philadelphia area with um, Church for Churches. And, but my grandfather, <laughs> I loved him. My granddad made me learn how to play piano. And that's how I started playing piano. Um, <laughs> it's funny because one thing took me into another thing. The, the playing of piano and the teaching of choirs and churches all over, I actually got a chance to read an ad in a newspaper. That's how it all started. Um, it was Will Ward from the famous Ward Singers put an ad in the paper so that um, she wanted someone that could sing, sight read, 
and play music well. Now, I, I was already doing this, okay? I was already doing it. And I told my grandmother, I said, you know, Grandma, I really need a job because I overheard my grandparents talking and I heard them tell my, tell, uh, talk to each other and saying that my mother wasn't going to be able to do what she used to do. She was a ship welder for the army. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So, and I was, I was like struck. I said, oh my God, mom can't do anything. And I told my grandmother, I said, I need a job. So I and saw And you were an what, 13 years old? Yep, 13. <laughs> I saw an ad in the paper. It said, people, singers wanted, you could sing, sight read, and play music well. And I told my grandmother, I said, I got this, you know, <laughs> I, I, I can do this. So my grandmother said, well, I don't know. Ask your mother. I said, well, I think she'll agree. Well, the next day I called her, I called Miss Ward and I said, um, can, can I get an audition with you? And she said, well, we're just not going to do an audition. We're just going to because she's very, she's very proper. All we're going to do is, is if you can sing, I said, yes, ma'am, I can. Well, how old are you? I said, 13. She said, oh, it's just too young. So I said, well, I can play too. She said, oh, have you been trained? I said, yes, ma'am. Well, well, then we'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Well, I hope but to get there. <laughs> <laughs> and when, when she heard me sing and she heard me play, she said, oh my God, you are for what I've been looking for. And that was at 13. From 13 until I turned 16, we background everybody. She background uh, Bobby Rydell, Chubby Checker, um, Fabian, Frankie Avalon, um, Freddie Cannon, um, uh, Jackie Wilson, and it was fun for me. You know, I, I I was just the youngest kid and had really a wonderful time doing it. I got paid, honey. I'm telling you, um, that was wonderful. <laughs> I, I would take the money home. I would take five hundred dollars per session. Whoa! To That's my good. mother, big money. Oh my goodness! That was big money back then. It was huge back money then, back then. Yes, oh big money wow. Back then. Then. And and wow. and they were paying me to sing, and I I loved singing, and I didn't care what it was. We just sang, and we sang background for all of these people. The the, the one thing I loved about Bobby Rydell, he's so funny. I call him Ritterelli, and he calls me LaRue. He said, you know, uh, uh, how, did you, how did you actually get with Miss Ward? And I told him the story, and he said, damn. I said, well, what's wrong? He said, you are still amazing, and you, are, you still can sing. I'm like, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> but that's what we did, and that, that's leading up to how I got started singing and how I became Dee Dee Sharp. I didn't become Dee Dee Sharp right away. I backgrounded all of these folks. And when we background the Chubby Checker session, Cal Man and Dave Apple, who were the owners of, well, along with Bernie Lowe, the owners of Cameo Parkway, they said, well, um, we got a song and all you have to do is sing it. I'm like, well, what's the song? So he said, oh, well, baby, 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 take it easy. Let's do it right. I said, well, what, well, what do you want me to do? Just counterpart, okay? So Chubby would sing and I would sing. Let's do it right. The next thing I know, I was in the studio with them 
And then Cal came in and said, we got a song for you. Now, keep in mind, I did not know what I was doing. I, I, I had no clue. <laughs> it, was, it was funny to me. But anyway, what I did was I started thinking about the song that I had to do. And Cal came in with another song. And it was Mashed Potato Time. So not only did I do the Slow Twisting song, at the same time, the same night, I did Mashed Potato Time. Now, I had never seen the music because Cal couldn't sing, but Dave Apple could. All they saw, all, all we had was um, lyric sheets. Dave said, can you read music? I said, yes, I can. Up and down, up and down, up and down. That's, that's what the song was. The mashed potato started a long time ago. We the tag I so lucky Joe. I'm like, okay, I can handle this. And that's how it happened. Did you have a feeling that after you recorded those songs that they were going to be mm -mm. smash hits? Did you have any inclination None at all? At, no. I I had no idea that that was going to work out the way it did. I had no idea. Um, I'm, I'm praising God that it did, but I had no idea. No, no, no. I mean, only thing I could, only thing I, I was accustomed to is Jesus, Jesus, keep me near the cross. I wasn't accustomed to singing no mashed potato. The mashed potato started a long time ago. I'm like, come on, give me a break. <laughs> it, just, it didn't agree, you know? It just, I, I mean, I could sing anything, but the, the secular music was not in my purview. It just wasn't. And then what happened? Because, you know, didn't that go to number one? I mean, it was a big hit. Thank the Lord. <laughs> so God, how did God, God must have been looking out for me? <laughs> <laughs> God's been looking out. I mean, God has been looking out for me every single day. I mean, I am just so blessed and so grateful. And God works in mysterious ways. I mean, yes, He does. Comes, surprises you, you know. Yeah, and so yeah, this... it, it, He's got a sense of humor too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a sense of humor. I mean, it's it's shocking, but it it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. So when uh, mashed potatoes took off like that, um, I mean, I'm sure your life changed drastically at that point. Oh, yeah, oh, definitely. Um, when I did the first appearance on American Bandstand, uh, it, the kids did not know that I was Dee Dee Sharp. And well, the, the first thing, Cal, Cal changed my name. Uh, my, my name is Dion LaRue. That is my Christian name. Now, Cal said that you sound, you, your name sounds like a French hooker. And I said, Cal, that is just ridiculous. I said, it's, it's my Christian name. He said, that's the problem. Because he was Jewish. He said, that's the problem. You got a, you got a Christian name, but it's weird. I'm like, uh, 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 Cal. No, 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 no. So he, he, nobody knew that I was D.E. Sharp. Nobody knew. Um, and when I made my first appearance on American Bandstand, all of the kids at school, we're like, whoa, Miss Thing. Oh, you just doing this. I'm like, no, mm -mm, that's, I denied it, okay? I denied oh, it. Oh my goodness, really? I denied it, I denied it, but it, it did happen. It, it was really me, but I denied it, okay? I didn't want anybody to know. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Just out of curiosity, because I'm, um, 
I, I, I tell a lot of my guests that, that, that join us uh, on our show that you know, I, I explain to them how I got introduced to their music. Mm -hmm. And the main person was uh, Dick Biondi. Uh, and I, I got familiar and I became a fan of Dick Biondi when he was at WJMK in the early 80s in, uh, in, in, uh, in Chicago. And, um, and that's how I got uh, familiar with, with, uh, with your great work. And, um, and I remember my parents saying, uh, you know, because, you know, that time in music was pretty special. You know, the, you're talking about uh, late 50s, early 60s, you know, the time that you were that you were coming up. And I was just just interested to know, uh, you know, what once mashed potato and once your hits start coming, what kind of uh, you I imagine you started to uh, play shows and, and tour well, across the, the U.S. Before, at that time. Before that happened, before that happened. They sent me to um, they sent me to modeling and charm school. They sent me to acting classes, and they sent me to vocal training. Um, and my vocal coach was one place, and the director of the Fantastics at the time was Milton Moss, who did all of the show for the Fantastics. He was my coach, my acting coach. Um, and they sent me to modeling and charm school so that I could project and actually know how to do things, um, which served me years later. But I didn't understand what all this, what all this, what, what, what was going on. I really didn't. You know, I was just going through the motions. And the thing about it is, um, I actually felt special, but then I didn't feel special. I, I was scared all the time. So, uh, well, that that that's me. That's me. I'm I'm a very quiet person. You know, I talk quiet. I sing quiet. No, I don't sing quiet. I sing loud. But I think I talk quiet. But it, it just it scared me. But I had to do that. Well, do you think that um, the fact that you were playing this kind of music, and it really wasn't speaking to your heart, I guess, right? Is that what the problem was? You were kind of fighting with yourself, maybe? It, it did not speak to my heart. It really didn't. I mean, slow twisting? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Mashed potato time? Um, no, it did not speak to my heart. The, this music that spoke to my heart, was when Kenneth Gamble wrote, Kenneth Gamble and Jimmy Bishop wrote, I Really Love You. And that was the first time that I had done anything um, rhythm and blues wise. I, I was doing pop. So I never got a chance to do the Chitlin circuit. I, I didn't do that. I, I went straight from being um, singing to going on stage and then I was taught how to be a performer. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was different. It was very much different. But I guess I was fighting. I guess I guess I did. I guess I did. Well you did have a string of rhythm and blues songs. I mean so you you've had an unbelievable a career, you know, one song after another after another. You can't even remember how many, right? <laughs> That's true. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the music remember. you really like, right? Yeah, yeah it, it was the music I really liked. It, it, I really loved those songs. Um, I, I like songs with meaning, songs with purpose. Yeah. And, and if it didn't have a purpose or a meaning, it, it meant very little to me. The person that, um, that, that really resonated with me. As a matter of fact, I just spoke to him yesterday, and that was Mr. Jerry Butler. Jerry's wow. wife, Annette, and, and me were born a week apart. And I loved her. Oh, God, I loved her. She passed last year. And 
I talked to Jerry yesterday because he was he was he turned 81 yesterday, oh. and I sang I did did a video for him to say happy birthday. So he was like, he was saying, yeah, Gam, you 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 really doing a good job. You're doing a good job. I'm like, okay, Jerry. But the song that Jerry did for me was called Breaking and Entering. That was the, the up-tempo song. And that really did, it, it brought me from, uh, from out of that candy, candy cane thing to the disco era. And that was wonderful for me. It was just amazing for me. Dexter Wandell and Cynthia Biggs wrote a song for me. Um, and I love that song. It, you can see it on um, on YouTube. Um, what, what song is it? Oh, Father God, I've done so many. I'm like, they're all about love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nothing wrong with that. That should be Nothing easy to find. Then. I, yes. so the song... The song Jerry did for me is I um I love you anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. You have to go onto YouTube and see the video. I'm wearing this I love I love wearing hats. I I, I love wearing hats. And I wore this uh royal blue fedora. And <laughs> It's strange how <laughs> how stuff happens. It's like what the, the women are dressing now. The women that dress now, I don't like it. It's it's <laughs> too it's too revealing. I mean, they're they're showing all their uh, what you might call it, and it don't make sense. It just it does not make sense. Class, okay, that is class, and and that particular song. I love that song. Another song that um, Dexter Wanzel and um, Cynthia wrote for me was I Believe in Love. Ooh. That, oh my God, I Believe in Love. <laughs> that song is amazing. But Jerry did that entire album. Jerry did the whole CD. And it's just called Dee. Well, we'll definitely wonderful. check that out. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I mean, such a an amazing career uh, you, you've had, and you're still you're still going. And uh, you know, you're you, cla like you said, classy, mm -hmm. and just you know the songs that you've recorded. Over the years, my gosh, so memorable, unforgettable. And oh, for, for, what, an old girl, yeah, for an old girl, uh, girl, I'm not doing too bad. <laughs> yeah, I was just, you look terrific. You Thank look you. terrific, and and you seem very, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, very happy. And uh, you know, the relation seems like um, the relationships you've developed with people over the years. Uh, you know, are so, you know, very strong and very special to you. And, and uh, you seem just very, very happy and just very, uh, very, very happy, very content. And it's just so great that you, uh, there aren't many people in the music industry uh, around, you know, there aren't many like you. And, and I'm just so glad that you, you know, you agreed to come on our, our show so we can, meet with you and talk with you and about your my, amazing career. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Well, Dee Dee, I, let me just ask in closing, what's the best thing that ever happened to you? My husband. Oh. How did you guys meet? Tell it. Can you tell us about that? How did, how did you end up uh, meeting your husband? Okay. My husband's name is Bill Witherspoon. He is an attorney. Um, I needed a lawyer. And my girlfriend, who lives in North Jersey, uh, said, well, I've got this dynamite lawyer and you got to, you got to use him. I said, okay, fine. I said, I don't have a problem with that. 
And I kept calling this man and calling this man and calling this man, and he did not return my call. And I said, I told her, I said, what, what, what's with this guy? She said, oh, he's probably busy. I said, mm, I don't care. It don't matter to me. I'm done. I'm going to call him one more time. And if I call him one more time and he doesn't call me back, then I'm done. Well, he called me, what, New Year? No, no, no. Valentine's night, Valentine's Day, the, the, the day before Valentine's Day, he called me back. And he said, I have been in court. And I said, oh, I felt, I felt, I felt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad. But, 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 but the truth of the matter is I was pissed, okay? So he said, um, I would definitely love talking with you about this case. And I, I told him, you know, what I wanted. And he said, well, um, I'm afraid I can't take your case. And I said, what? What are you, what are you talking about? It, you, could, you can't take my case. A after we spent the, over an hour on the phone, he said, but, but, but wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, because I really would like to take you out. <laughs> now, he did not know that I was Dee Dee Sharp. He did not know. He, sight unseen, he never saw me and I never saw him. He said, um, are you busy tomorrow night? I said, B -b 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 I I I'm free. I'm free. I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm free. I'm free. But I'm telling you now, I'm not interested in no, no, nothing. Dinner is all you're going to get, baby <laughs> doll. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> he went to dinner. We went to dinner. Valentine's Day night, and he has not left my side since. Oh, fantastic. We, were, we went steady for four years before we even got married, and I told him I did not want to be married. I didn't care. My mother told me, you, be you better marry this one because he's, he's a good one. He's a good one, okay? He's a good one. My aunts told me, oh, he's a good one. He's a good one. He's a good one. <laughs> and that's, that was the reason that I married him. Okay. And we have been married for 24 years, 25 coming up in February 14th. It'll be 25. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, that's he congratulations. Left, he has not left my side. <laughs> not left my side, even for a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> that's <laughs> and that's that's why it. Well, you know what? When you think about it, when I think about what I've been through and and the experiences that I've had, and and the people that I've met, I thank God that He chose my husband to be with me. I really am. I really do thank God for him. Oh. Because we're both Christians and we both understand, and um, we both understand a lot. And it, it has not been easy, okay? Because he's Caucasian and he's cute too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're cute too. Thank you so much. But you know, it hasn't been easy. It has not been easy. But guess what? We're together. That's beautiful. Really. I'm so happy for you because you oh, seem like a wonderful you. person. You deserve all of the good stuff that God's thank given you. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you well, so thank much. you so much for joining us on the show. This has really been great. Um, Joe, you know, what do you have to say to this lovely oh, lady? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, uh, 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 Number one, thank you, of course. Um, You're more than welcome. Honor and a pleasure. You're more and, than welcome. Uh, and Didi, how can uh, our audience, how can people stay connected with you? Are you on uh, social media? Oh, yes. If, yes. Oh, 
Go ahead. How do they stay in touch? www.ddsharp.com. And I am on um, Instagram, uh, the original DD Sharp. Um, yeah, they they can they get all of the information from my website. Most okay. of the information from my website. Oh, terrific. Great. Terrific. And and uh before I depart, um thank you again, Dee Dee. Honor You're and a pleasure. And uh you know, when I reached out to you a couple months ago, I can just tell by our communication that you were really just a really a a, a wonderful, classy uh, lady and and thank you so much for all the talent and and music uh, that you've provided uh, provided us. Thank you. And it sounds like you're you're going to keep on going. You're enjoying it. And, yes, and I am. And, I'm and, not. I'm not anywhere near retirement. <laughs> okay. Even that's great. At, at seventy five, I am not ready to retire. That's awesome. That's great. We're so glad you're not retiring it because uh, it's such a wonderful, talented woman. Thank you so much. And, you're welcome. Uh, and before I depart, Pam, thank you so much uh, as thank usual. You, Pam. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Dee Dee. And, uh, and don't forget to follow the Dick Biondi film, our website, dickbiondifilm.com. We also have uh, a fantastic YouTube channel. Be sure to uh, subscribe to that. Also follow us on Facebook. We have an awesome Facebook group and Facebook page. All right, everybody. Till next time. God bless. God bless. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Bye, -bye. baby. <laughs>